part three of uh, the tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to look at how we can take the barrel that we've by now modelled and unwrapped and how we can use this already created barrel to create um, a very simple high poly version so that we can bake off uh, an ambient occlusion map to be used within uh, texturing. Now to do this I need to create a copy of this uh, oil drum and to avoid confusion later on I'm going to name this oil drum, I'm going to add a suffix to this of LP and this is going to refer to low poly. To create a copy of this I need to hold shift and drag this over and make sure that object is set to copy and that the name is not LP underscore or LP001 and in fact it's changed to underscore HP and this will represent high poly and I'm just going to hide the original low poly barrel to avoid any confusion. I'm going to right click on it, hide selection. Now what this barrel is going to allow us to do is essentially subdivide the geometry that already exists and we can do that by adding uh, a mesh smooth modifier. And when I do this you'll notice that it doesn't look quite right. It looks quite soft. And this is because each polygon is being subdivided and smoothed with the polygon that is next to it, the polygon that's next to that, so on and so forth. And we have to add in what are known as supporting edges to create a far tighter look, to create something that is, is, looks really nice and, and looks really high detail. And to do this we need to nestle and edit poly in between Mesh Smooth and Unwrap UVW. I'm just going to turn Mesh Smooth off for now because it will be a little bit distracting. And I'm going to select Unwrap UVW and I'm just going to drop down the list here and add a new level of Edit Poly. Just bear in mind guys that uh, as we have added a new level of Edit Poly, if we do anything like Extrude or Inset, then we will need to re-relax parts of this Unwrap UVW. But all I'm planning on doing is adding edges and that data is translated down to this Unwrap UVW. We won't have to change anything here so it should work absolutely perfectly with this Unwrap. Now in order to add the edges we've already used Connect today. We're going to use it again now um, but this time we're going to use it a little bit more constructively. Now as I said before I'm going to toggle uh, this mesh smooth on and off from time to time. If for whatever reason you find when you toggle yours on it doesn't work then what you'll find is that your show end results uh, on slash off toggle will come in handy here. If you just select that so that it kind of looks like it's indented you'll notice now that as I turn it on and off I get a constant update um, and this is why working this layer methodology the way that we are here is really useful. Now we're going to start at the top uh, of uh, the oil drum here. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to inset uh, this group of polygons here. Now because it's uh, they're all triangles we don't have any ring data we can't ring across basically. So I'm going to quickly just going to uh, select all of these here just by holding control and left clicking. I'm sure there is a, a faster method but I don't know of it. But just be careful that when you are moving this you don't actually nudge any of it. If you do notice it move then control Z and uh, as demonstrated there. <laughs> and what we're going to do whilst this is all selected or once this is all selected we're just going to add an inset here using the settings box next to inset and I'm just going to increase this gently. What I want is a new edge formed right next to the original edge. Once we've done this and I'm not going any more than 0.08 it's a very small inset. And as I add this now I shall re-enable Mesh Smooth and you'll see now that uh, this section looks a lot tighter. Okay, if I hide it at poly now, that's what it looked like previously. And you can see the difference there. Now, the next step is to add edges along the inside rim. And to do that, we need to ring each edge here. So I'm just going to select one and click ring. Or you can select one and shift click the one that's next to it. And we're going to use connect here. So I'm going to right click connect. And I want two edges. The reason why I want two edges is because for each edge that I need to support, I need to have a separate edge. For instance, this will go some way to supporting these edges, but it won't actually make them as tight as we have here. So we need to increase this edge count by two. And we're going to use this pinch slider 
to push these edges right up close to the other edges and we, we want to get to about 98 here once we've done that click the tick and we'll toggle on the mesh smooth just so you can kind of see the difference so that's that's what it looks like now and you can see a huge difference here in the inside rim we have a whole lot more detail now now the great thing about 3ds max is it remembers the settings so we can go ahead and uh, select the top of the ring and literally just click the connect button now same with this here I'm gonna click and shift click right click I'm gonna click connect and I add two edges now as I mesh smooth this my settings are remembered so I don't have to keep going back into settings when we come to this point here we need to uh, be a bit smarter about it we can grab both of these uh, edges here and ring them but it's far more efficient to double click this central edge and we'll scroll all the way down here double click this central edge this central edge and this central edge this one and this one and we'll just convert this selection to a polygon um, and what this is going to allow us to do is uh, inset these particular polygons here to create a nice edge for us so again we want to create something that's relatively tight there I'll mesh move that now and you kind of see that's much tighter if you want something a little bit tighter than that um, then we just control Z a few and I'll just cancel the inset and we will have to uh, ring each one of these separately so what you might want to do is just select each one of these all the way down to the bottom here and we want to go down to the last edge here rather than uh, all the way under and we just click ring and I'm just going to click connect here make sure that I've still got the same settings and when I enable mesh smooth now you'll notice that this is far nicer it's far sharper than it was and this is what we're looking for the last thing that needs to be done is we need to inset the base same as we did uh, the top by a very small amount and then lastly we need to focus on this cap section here and I'll select all of the top make sure we don't move it insert that again and we will select the main base and just click connect there and that's pretty much it for the edge selections and you'll see as I increase my mesh smooth now or certainly enable it we now have a far sharper box ah oh, far sharper uh, cylinder here. I'll uh, unhide the other one so you can kind of see by comparison but you can see very clearly here there's a lot more detail on, on this particular barrel than there is on this one. Now the next step is to uh, render uh, a texture from this uh, particular shape here. Now because it's got the same unwrap and we haven't really added uh, any destructible uh, polygons to this we've literally just included edges that are now added to that unwrap we can focus on actually setting up the render we don't have to redo any of the other bits now to do this I'm going to press uh, the render settings and we have to uh, set the scene up a little bit so I'm going to hide my uh, cylinder here the low poly and an ambient occlusion map is what we're going to bake and, and to do this we need to have a light source so to add a light source we're going to come to the create tab lights rather than having photometric we'll change that to standard we will look at photometric lighting later on but for now we just need a standard skylight and I'm just going to left click in the scene to place that what you'll find is that everything now becomes a little bit washed out and if I leave my mouse alone for a little while we get a realistic representation of what that shadowing is going to look like we need to select the light and come to the modify tab and we just need to enable casting shadows here under render we then need to come to the render setup come to advanced lighting and then under no lighting plugin we need to click on light tracer this will just speed up the render overall we can close that now 
Next, I want to select this barrel and I want to press 0 on the keyboard or I want to come to the rendering tab and click on render to texture. Now the first thing that uh, we need to look at here is, is what a lot of these options mean. Um, basically everything at the top we don't need to really worry about. Okay, If you've got a network render set up then the chances are you already know what all of this stuff is. The first thing that we really need to change is down here. Now you, if you've never used this before, you'll find that within here use automatic unwrap is your default. We just need to make sure that we're using existing channel at this point because if we don't it's going to add a modifier just above this mesh smooth that's going to flatten the unwraps that we've already created and it will overwrite everything we've done. In a couple of weeks when we have a look at normal map projection we will be using projection mapping but we don't need to worry about this today. The next thing we need to worry about is the output bin here. Within here we can add a number of different types of maps. In this particular instance we want a complete map and we click add elements. The next thing we need to change is where we're going to save this. Now unlike everywhere else in 3ds Max, um, if we render an AO preview it's actually rendered without, uh, the preview is rendered without uh, the two pixel padding um, that is included when we actually save uh, the, the map in a folder. And what this will mean is that whenever I apply this or use this to as a multiply map over diffuse in Photoshop it will actually shorten the diffuse material and I end up with black lines uh, where my seams are. Of course we don't want that, it looks messy, it looks unprofessional uh, and we want to make sure that we have a nice tileable material uh, once we've started or once we've finished. Now to create a save for this I'm going to click the three dots within the uh, little box here. I'm going to navigate to the folder that I have already set up for you guys and I'm going to change the uh, file formats to bitmap and I'm going to call this one oil drum underscore AO and AO is going to signify ambient occlusion I'm going to click save. RGB 24 bit 16.7 million colors is fine click OK and we're ready to go. The only other thing we need to change is that currently the map size is 256 by 256 this isn't really going to help us a lot we need 1024 by 1024 so if we select the button that is labeled 1024 by 1024 it will automatically change the map size. Now we still have one step before we can click render. Our crate, or sorry, our barrel is currently uh, green and this is not necessarily going to translate well when we uh, import this into Photoshop and we use it as a multiply map. Also as well you'll find that this color might not represent shadows as well as white does. In any case we need to come to the material editor here or press M and we need to come down to the diffuse color box and change this to white. The 255, 255, 255, 00 and then 255 and click OK and drag and drop this onto the crate, sorry the barrel, got crate on the brain and we can get rid of this menu now. The next step and indeed the last step of this tutorial is to click render and wait for the render to complete. When we get this menu pop up missing map targets just click don't display this message again and click continue. All it means is that uh, in this location here we haven't told it what to do with the AO map that's rendered. We're not actually going to use it for anything uh, in the viewport as yet we're just going to use it for use in Photoshop. So click continue and watch your AO render. and this is what we should end up with. And what's actually happening here is all this high poly detail is being rendered into the low poly unwrap without a projection uh, box I find using this method is a little bit more accurate than using a projection method and it's certainly far easier uh, without having to uh, re-unwrap everything. And that pretty much concludes uh, section 3 uh, of this tutorial.